Good day. My name is Antonio David Alvarez. I am part of the Precision Space Systems Laboratory from the University of Florida. And today I will talk to you about the torsion pendulum and laser interferometer for space gravity missions. Missions related to gravitational waves or Earth geodesy like LISA and GRACE use a reference body or test mass. This body is contained within the spacecraft and its motion is measured as gravitational force affects it. Two methods are used to measure this motion, capacitive sensing and laser interferometry. The combination of the test mass, its housing and electronics forms the gravitational reference sensor or GRS. The LISA gravitational reference sensor consists of a test mass, its housing, 18 electrodes for 6 degree of freedom capacitive sensing and actuation, uh, electronics, the charge control system, and thanks to these components and LISA's drag-free control, the test mass is basically in a quiet, uh, noiseless environment following a pure geodesic orbit. On the right side, you can see an image of the LISA Pathfinder GRS showing only the test mass and the frame of the electronic housing, along with some of the charge control components on the exterior. The torsion pendulum is a test bed for LISA technology based on the design by the University of Trento. It consists of a crossbar with a test mass on each end hanging from a one meter long tungsten fiber with a diameter of 50 micrometers. The motion of the fiber is damped by an eddy current damper, which is on the top part of the assembly. And this is all contained within a vacuum chamber. Uh, here's an image of the actual pendulum and an image of the thermal housing used to encase it. Here's a close up on the gravitational reference sensor and the interferometer assembly with the X direction and phi angle about the fiber axis. Currently, it's using two different gravitational reference sensors. One is a simplified one with six electrodes, and then there's the LISA-like GRS with 18 electrodes. The interferometer that we have on both sides of the simplified GRS measures the differential motion of the two test masses that are not contained within the GRS. The torsion pendulum has undergone a series of recent changes and upgrades. It has a new crossbar assembly with test masses that have been diamond turned to LISA specifications to improve their surface condition and reflectivity. A new motorized rotational stage allows us to move the bottom bench holding the IFO and the GRS. The eddy current damper has been improved through changes in the configuration of its magnetic casings. The vacuum chamber has been baked out and leak tested to reduce pressure as much as possible. Heaters and temperature sensors have been included for temperature gradient experiments. And the interferometer design has also been improved with a series of changes to be mentioned in the following slides. On the right, you can see an image of the torsion pendulum bench and of the motorized rotational stage that lies under the bench. The capacitive sensing system within the GRS measures test mass motion for several degrees of freedom. This diagram shows the capacitive system for the simplified GRS. It obtains the motion by measuring the position dependent capacitance of a pair of electrodes on the opposite sides of the cube towards the test mass. The electronics that are coupled to these electrodes acquire the voltage and basically this is proportional to the displacement of the test mass itself. These signals are amplified and digitally processed and these electrodes can also be found for, uh, they're also used for actuation to control the motion of the test mass or minimize its motion for experiments. Alternate pairs of electrodes are used to polarize the test mass with a 100 kilohertz injection voltage signal and shift the frequencies of the signals of interest. The capacitive signal is mixed with in-phase and out-of-phase components of the injection signal, low-passed and down-sampled to obtain the capacitive readout. On the left side, you can see the, a computer-aided design of the LISA-like GRS. 
and on the right side of the slide you can see the actual open lisa like GRS. The second method that is used to detect the motion of the test masses is the laser interferometer. Here we have a top view of the interferometer within the vacuum chamber. Basically we have on the lower left a fiber where the laser comes in. Uh, it's a 1064 nanometer laser and since we're using uh, only one frequency in the system, it's a homodyne interferometer. Uh, this laser passes through a beam splitter where it's uh, sent outwards into two directions. We have a beam that goes to the test mass on the left side and a beam that goes to the test mass on the right side. And basically there they pass through a lens to focus it so that the waist of the beam is located on the reflective uh, surface of the test mass. These beams then bounce off of the test mass and the one on the left side passes through a quarter wave plate that delays that beam by 90 degrees. This basically forms a, two separate interferometers at different polarizations and it's what makes it a polarization multiplexed interferometer. As the torsion pendulum, as the torsion member hangs from the tungsten fiber and moves in a rotational motion along the axis of the fiber, which is in this image coming out of the screen, those two test masses move and the paths that those two beams must travel changes. Once these two beams meet again on the beam splitter on the lower right, and because they only meet once in this, in this endpoint, that makes it a Mach center interferometer. Um, that's when they interfere and they, that information is basically sent through two output beams that go outside of the chamber. These beams are then split into their different polarization components and basically photodetectors um, receive those, those output beams in their different states. The two output beams coming out of the interferometer are pretty much duplicates of each other and they contain the same test mass motion information. They are then split by polarization beam splitters into their different polarization states and each of these goes to a different photodetector for a total of four photodetectors. The signals of the same polarization are combined to reject common noise and then when we looked at these combined signals of the two different polarizations we can use the arc tangent function to obtain the phase shift between them. This is proportional to the test mass motion and only requires a scaling factor proportional to the wavelength of the beam to obtain the actual test mass uh, differential motion. Our goal sensitivity for the interferometer is 100 picometers per square root hertz. And on the right side, you can see a figure of the four photodetectors and a, an image of the two signals and the phase shift between them. Here we have an overview of the performance of both the interferometer and capacitive system. On the left side, we have an amplitude spectral density of the rotational motion of the torsion pendulum. And we can see that both the GRS and the interferometer share the 50 minute period peak at the left side of the plot. And as we move towards higher frequencies, we can see that the interferometer is at about one order of magnitude below the sensitivity of the capacitive system. On the right plot, we have the equivalent Lisa test mass acceleration noise. And basically the red and blue line are the capacitive and interferometer noise levels currently, respectively. And the green and black line represent the best obtained noise level for before the upgrade, the current and recent upgrades for the torsion pendulum. And the dotted line represent sort of reference or uh, baseline noise levels. And we can see that basically we are pretty much at the same level as before or better in some frequencies for the, for the current iteration of the interferometer and GRS. The experiments done on the torsion pendulum can also be used in the development of other technology. Specifically, we're looking at Earth Geodesy uh, technology. We're working on a project that is part of the Instrument Incubator Program. 
and it's basically using the GRS concept within the spacecraft for Earth Geodesy purposes. It also has laser ranging interferometry from one spacecraft to the other, and this uses two endpoints that are called triple mirror assemblies that are attached as well to the GRS. On the right side, you will see three figures. Two of them are the concept of the rescale GRS. One of them is fully closed, and the other one uh, has some of its sides removed, so you can see the inner electrodes. And then on the bottom, you can see the concept for the triple mirror assembly, which is attached to one of the sides of the GRS. The future work for the torsion pendulum and laser interferometer starts by looking at the noise sources in each of them, like thermal expansion noise, laser intensity noise, and so forth. Uh, once we look at these noise sources, then it's a matter of trying to improve the sensitivity of the interferometer system and also to upgrade the data acquisition that's used to obtain the data from these systems. And as I mentioned on the previous slide, uh, these results can be used for the application related to Earth Geodesy. Thank you very much for your attention, and please contact me with any questions you might have. Thanks.